This is your KCTV 5 News Update. KCTV 5 is staying on top of a story we brought you as it was breaking this morning. This is video here we shared as black smoke billowed high into the sky near the stadiums. Now that smoke from the fire at Leeds Industrial Park on Stadium Drive. That's where we find our Savannah Rudisell. So Savannah, how long do you think it'll take to put this fire out this morning? You were saying days. Yeah, Kelly, at last check, they know they'll, they'll at least be working through the rest of the day and may have to go into tomorrow as well. Let me uh, let you take a look here right behind me. So right at the Leeds Industrial Park, they are still spraying water up onto the roof. We know just within the past few hours is when firefighters have actually been able to get inside this building. Until then, this is all that they've been able to do to try, just try to stop that fire from spreading. This is a very large building. We looked and it's about 1.5 million square feet feet so that what they're trying to do right now is to make sure that uh, it just doesn't spread to any other part of the building. This fire started just around one o'clock this morning. A security guard was checking the cameras and they noticed that smoke was right in the corner so they called the fire department then and everyone who was here made it out of this building safely. Firefighters say that this job is particularly complicated because of how large this building is and what's inside. So the former building uh, or the excuse me the Leeds building used to be the GM assembly plant, but now it's used for rental and storage space. So we have cars, there are boats, there are RVs in here. A lot of them have burned and their gas has just added fuel to the fire. First responders, when they initially got here, tried to go inside to fight these flames, but they watched as propane tanks and blow torches and just some unmarked canisters started exploding around them. So they had to pull out for their safety. And now here this afternoon, it looks like they are finally able to get inside a little bit to start uh, fighting these flames. We know that they were burned on multiple different levels of this building in different parts. I actually just spoke with someone who was coming out here to check on his property. He said someone who works here was calling him, checking on a, on a boat that he had, and he said at least his boat was able to be saved. So it doesn't seem like everything in this building is a complete loss, but we know from firefighters that there is significant property damage. For that reason, the Kansas City, Missouri Bomb and Arson Squad will be out to investigate just as soon as it's safe, and they say they may be calling in the ATF as well. That's not uh, a positive yet, but they say just because of the amount of damage to this building and this property, they're going to have to continue to investigate what caused this fire. We'll stay with Kansas City Fire Department as they determine the cause and bring that to you just as soon as we get it. Reporting live in Kansas City, Savannah Rudisell, KCTV 5 News. All right, Savannah, at least that's a little glimpse of good news that not everything was a total loss. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now let's change gears now to our weather. We started off cool this morning, but Bill Hurlbrink, he's in tracking a warming trend ahead this afternoon. Hi, Bill. Good morning, Kelly. Yeah, we are, we got rid of the clouds today, so just lots of sunshine. Really going to help us warm up into the afternoon. Bordner City camera here from our tower at 31st and Grand. Looking north, it's got one cloud up there, a handful of clouds there in Savannah's live shot you can see. But again, lots of sunshine expected through this afternoon. And we'll warm up as well, close to 90 degrees. Live power Doppler not tracking anything. Just a little bit of ground clutter and some false returns there from radar. Took a, take a peek regionally from satellite and radar. A little bit of cloud cover off to the eastern side of Missouri, northwestern Kansas. A little bit of cloud cover is all we're going to do in that department today. 82 downtown, 83 at KCI. It looks like a couple 70s hanging on there and then this afternoon we warm up under abundant sunshine to just about 90 degrees today. Warmer, more humid weather is on the way for tomorrow. We'll talk about that plus our chances of rain as we wrap up the week in my full forecast in just a bit. Kelly. All right, thanks Bill. Now hospitals on both sides of the state line, Kansas and Missouri, they're seeing a surge in coronavirus cases linked to the new faster spreading Delta variant. Focusing first on Kansas, the state says it's seeing about 371 new cases a day. That's the highest the infection rate has been since the end of February. And in Missouri, hospitals in a coronavirus ravaged community of Springfield are about to get some backup. Cox Health says 141 traveling nurses and respiratory therapists joined the fight and 60 six more are expected to arrive later this year. Cox Health later this month, rather Cox Health and Mercy Springfield are dealing with a major influx of COVID patients as Delta spreads quickly through surrounding areas where vaccination rates are low. This disease is different. It is quicker, sicker and younger. I would say the ramp up time from 14 to 125 patients, which was in about five weeks for us, um, was almost triple as fast as during the winter. 
So the help that they're getting is definitely going to be needed. Mercy Springfield says the virus is the worst it's ever been there. Over the weekend, the hospital opened a sixth COVID unit. That's one more than it needed at any point last year. Last week, Springfield's fire chief issued this startling statement saying, quote, this is a mass casualty event happening in slow motion. EMS resources are depleted and the hospital systems are overwhelmed. Our community is in crisis. Now, however, there is a hopeful new sign. More people are taking the problem seriously. Mercy's chief administrative officer says the hospital's vaccine clinic increased from 150 to 250 appointments per day. Now, one Missouri man is expressing deep regret for not getting the vaccine sooner. Terrell Brown, he is 38 years old, but spent the last several months fighting for his life after he says he hesitated to get the shot. Gabriella Vidal shares his story. And I don't want nobody to go through what I'd have been through. This was 38-year-old Terrell Brown's reality for the last three months. I've been in this hospital this whole time. I've been in the hospital for 76 days now. The father of two got COVID-19 on his birthday, April 13th. The virus quickly threatened his life. From April 26th all the way to like the second week of June, I don't remember anything. I was in a coma. It, it was a lot of dark times then. He says his heart stopped three times throughout his treatment. They gave me a 5% chance of living. And then they didn't give up on me. And um, I don't know where I started getting better. A blessing, he says, that could have been avoided had he gotten the COVID-19 vaccine. Before I got sick, I, I, I was still like in the decision making process. I was on the fence. Some days I was like, you know, I felt like I, I need to get it. Then some days it's just like I was like, no, I don't need it because I never get sick. And I haven't all this time I haven't got sick. But like now after experiencing what I experienced, I'm definitely getting it. Brown urges anyone who hasn't gotten the COVID-19 vaccine to learn from the battle he still faces. I have to learn how to walk again. We take advantage of like simple things in life, like going to the bathroom and brushing your teeth. I have trouble doing all that now. So I highly recommend everybody to get the vaccines and really protect themselves because this is no joke. Happy Terrell is recovering well. He did leave a hospital Monday to start rehabilitation. Missouri Governor Mike Parson is expected to enact the state's first gas tax increase in decades. Parson is scheduled to sign the tax hike into law today, setting in motion a gradual increase from the state's 17 cents a gallon gas tax to 29 and a half cents. That's over the next five years that'll happen. Now we are breaking down other rules and how you could be reimbursed for some of that extra tax. We'll have the full story coming up in our newscast this afternoon. Turn to KCTV 5 News for the latest all day. This is your personalized update because KCTV 5 News stands for you.